So we're going to wrap up our discussion of even numbers and rational numbers with, with a discussion here of, of rational numbers and, and some of their properties. Rational numbers, strictly speaking, aren't really a part of number theory um, because, because they are not all integers. Um, but they, they are built from integers. They, they are, in a sense, kind of the next step up from integers. And they have some interesting properties that, that are going to let us uh, kind of continue our discussion of methods of proving things. So I, I've got the definition here, right? A rational number is one that can be written in the form P over Q where P and Q are integers. And when you see a definition of rational numbers, you'll, you'll often see it specifically say where Q can't be zero, right? Because we can't divide by zero. Uh, that, that really is, is a good point, but it's not necessarily a, a key element of the definition itself. Because you see the definition says it is a number that can be written this way. Right? And, and there, there's no number with zero in the denominator that could be written this way. So the definition itself kind of implicitly excludes uh, the possibility uh, of Q being zero. All right, so let's see what we can do with these. I, I've got um, a theorem here, if you will, right? It says the sum of two rational numbers is a rational number. And we're, we're going to prove this, right? And, and we're going to do it through what's called a constructive proof. Now, as a step-by-step -step matter, right, this proof is going to flow the same as, as other proofs that we've seen so far. Um, what makes it constructive is that in the end, we are going to actually have a formula that tells us what the sum is. Right? So we, we are going to construct the sum as part of the process here. So. Um, we're, we're, this is going to be follow a very similar pattern to what we've talked about with odd and even numbers, right? We're going to start by saying, let uh, what, what variable? Let's just use x and y, right? So let x and y be rational numbers. Now I'm going to apply the definition. Right? The definition says because they are rational, there exist integers, and I'm, I'm going to need four of them, right, because i got two numerators and two denominators. So um, let's see, how, how should we do this? Well, let, let's do, uh, let's, let's use some subscripts here, right? So I'm going to say n1, comma, n2, those will be our two numerators, comma, d1, comma, d2, uh, oh, yeah, integers, such that x equals the first numerator n1 divided by the sec the first denominator and y equals n2 divided by d2. Now, of course, I, I, I didn't say it. You're going to see me do this throughout some of our conversation here. Um, obviously, d1 and d2 can't be 0 right? because we can't divide by 0. But there's really no need to make that point right? because we know that x and y are numbers. Uh, D1 and D2 can't possibly be zero, right? Or, or they would result in this being undefined. All right, so now the question asks about the sum, right? So let, let's look at the sum. X plus Y equals what? Well, it equals N1 over D1 plus N2 over D2. And, and now I need to add these together. Uh, and because I, I don't yet know that this is a rational number to show that it's a rational number I, I have to get this into a form that looks like one integer divided by another right and to do this I'm just going to do you know fifth grade math here uh, I'm going to find it I'm going to do a common denominator I'm going to multiply the first one by d2 over d2 so this will be n1 d2 over d1 d2 Plus, and then I'll do the same thing over here on the other side. This is n2 d1 over d1 d2. And now I can add them together. Right? This is n1 d2 plus n2 d1 over d1 d2. Uh, and, and there you go. Right? This, this n1 d2 plus n2 d1 that's an integer and d1 d2 is an integer right and, and at this point i i do need to point out 
right? That that denominator is in fact not equal to zero, right? We we do know that because d1 is not zero and d2 is not zero. So we also know that this product is not equal to zero. Therefore, x plus y is the ratio of two integers, which means by the definition here, right, which means it's a rational number. And that's what we needed to show, right? And you, you see how we, we did get on, on this step right here, we did get that formula. We, we, we actually built or constructed the sum of these two numbers, right? So there's our proof. All right, so uh, the proofs we've looked at so far have, have been have been positive in a sense. We've shown that something is always true. Uh, but, you know, sometimes we disprove things, right? Some, sometimes we want to prove that, that something is, in fact, not always true. Uh, and that's what we've got here, right? The, this, this, this statement is not really a theorem because it's false. But it, it says the ratio of two integers is a rational number. And th this is not true. And the way we prove that things are not true is by finding a counterexample. We've kind of talked about this before when we're talking about um, logic. All I need is one counterexample. One bad apple to make this entire statement false, right? And, and to see this, right, take the numerator, uh, let's call it n, right, for numerator. Take the numerator to be any rational number, like, excuse me, any integer, doesn't matter what, and take the denominator to be zero. The ratio of these two, n divided by d, is not a rational number. The, the symbol for that is, is this q, right, with, uh, with a little bar on the, uh, on the left side. Um, there is no number that can be written in that form. Therefore, that number is not a rational number. So, and, and that disproves the, the, the statement here, right? Because all it takes is, you know, that one bad apple. Okay, so this, this brings to an end our, our discussion of, rash, of even numbers and rational numbers, kind of our, our very first introduction to number theory. Uh, in the next section, we're going to kind of take this a step further. We're going to talk about uh, something called divisibility, right? what it means for one number to be divisible by another. Uh, and at the end of that, we're, we're going to kind of see our, our first really concrete application. We're, we're going to see an algorithm for finding the greatest common divisor of two numbers uh, that is much better, much more efficient than the method you learned uh, for doing that, again, probably um, all the way back in the fifth grade.